Welcome to the Zions Bank Economic Update. My name is Joseph Mayans, and joining me is Robert Spinlove to discuss the current economic conditions. Robert, you know, 2019 has been kind of an interesting year for the economy. In many senses, the, the data seems kind of unsettled, specifically when we're looking at the labor market. You know, we had a strong January report, then February was very, very weak, uh, followed by a pretty solid March. Um, why, why don't you walk us through kind of what we've been seeing and kind of how things sit now? Yeah, it was a really interesting report, just like you said. Um, so we were expecting about 170,000 jobs to be created. We had 196,000 jobs come in in the uh, uh, March jobs report, which was released in uh, the first Friday of April. Uh, and that followed uh, the month before, came in at 30,000 jobs. So we go from 300,000 in January to 30,000 to 196. So we are seeing these fluctuations all over the place, up and down. Um, and so there's, there's not a lot of certainty as much as we've had in the past just because we've had these changing trends. Our unemployment rate is looking really good. It's still right around that all-time lows that we saw um, late last year. So unemployment remains low. Our underemployment rate is also coming down. And wage growth remains uh, very strong. It's about 3.2%. Uh, it was earlier about 3.4, but 32 is still a, a really good number. And so overall, the job support is looking good. And, and uh, you know, we're not seeing clear signs of, you know, of either a slowdown or a, a strong uptick. Uh, our labor force participation uh, actually did come down a tiny bit in, uh, in March. But overall, the jobs report is looking pretty good. Right. So I know uh, in these videos, we, we talk a lot about the labor market. Um, and I know going into uh, the March report, a lot of people were a little worried that we were, since we had such a weak uh, February report, we were worried that there may be a slowdown. Other than the labor market, what other indicators are, are you looking at out there? Yeah, so probably the, the number one indicator of economic growth is what we call the gross domestic product, or GDP. And uh, uh, we're expecting to get new GDP numbers uh, for the first quarter of 2019 uh, in just a few days. But uh, what we have right now is we have the fourth quarter of 2018. And it, you know, it was a, a pretty good number, came in uh, right about 2.8%. Uh, and for the year, uh, uh, overall GDP came in at 2.9%. Now, uh, President Trump's goal, uh, has uh, what he said that he wants to achieve, is 3% uh, economic growth. And it came in just below that, but you know that's a pretty good number right. for 2018. And what's really interesting is just a few months ago, back when we saw that really bad jobs report, a lot of people were estimating that GDP would come in at maybe 1% or 1.5%. Now it's looking closer to like GDP might come in at around or you know somewhere around two to two and a half percent. So we're we're seeing much stronger. Well, we're anticipating stronger growth than we were a couple of months ago. And remember what was going on earlier in this year. We had the the government shut down. We had uh, and we still do uh, the the shutdowns over. Uh, but we still have the you know problems related to international trade related to Brexit, related to uh, redoing uh, NAFTA. And so those are all kind of hanging over, but we are seeing a little more strength than we were expecting earlier on in the year. The other thing that we're watching really closely, uh, consumer confidence and consumer spending. Uh, so consumer confidence has definitely dropped from where it was last year, but it's still in a, in a decent level. It still indicates that people feel like the uh, economy is prosperous. And consumer spending uh, actually came in uh, at a surprise. The March retail sales figure came in higher than we were expecting. We we're expecting about seven tenths of a percent came in at nine tenths. Mm -hmm. So consumers feel better, uh, feel better than we anticipated them feeling and spending is coming in above where we thought. Right. So kind of putting all this together, <clears throat> the Fed is getting ready to have uh, their next meeting here. So when they're, when they're processing all this information, what do you see coming out of that meeting? Do you see them raising rates, lowering rates, keeping things the same? How do you see it? Yeah, so it, this is one of the toughest things to do right now is to try to figure out the Fed. Uh, we've seen a major policy shift with the Federal Reserve. Six months ago, the Fed was saying that they were going to continue raising interest rates uh, into 2019 and even into 2020. Um, you know, back in the fall, that, that was their message. 
Now you fast forward to today, the Fed has essentially said they're not going to raise rates anymore. They're going to keep them right about where they are. And markets expect that the Fed will actually be dropping rates. Um, and you know, the, the Fed has what we call a dual mandate. They're supposed to focus on maximum employment and stable price increases. They've actually pegged that, that uh, inflation rate at 2%. We know that we have, uh, we just talked about the strong jobs report and we continue to see low unemployment. So we're there on the first part of the dual mandate. Now, if inflation starts to increase above that 2%, the Fed can justify raising interest rates. But we continue to see inflation very low. In fact, the consumer price index uh, is coming, and, and also the personal consumption expenditure, the two main sources of inflation are both coming in below the Fed's goal of 2%. So it's really hard for the Fed to justify raising interest rates. So that's a big reason why they kind of uh, uh, pull back and said they'll be more patient. Now the struggle the Fed is facing is they've got President Trump essentially calling on them to drop rates. The President recently uh, called on the Fed to drop rates, uh, the federal funds rate, by uh, half a percent. So the Fed funds rate is right around 2.4 percent right now. The President wants them to drop it below 2 percent. Uh, and that definitely would spur ec more economic growth. Here's the problem. Uh, in the past three recessions, the Fed has dropped interest rates by about 5%. So they drop the rates down so they can spur economic growth and fight the recession. If we're only at 2 or 2.5%, two the Fed no longer has that tool if and when we hit the next recession. So that's the real struggle they're running into is do they want to give up this policy tool for short-term economic gain. Right. And I know the Fed is undergoing like a year-long review of their monetary policy to see how maybe they can address some of these concerns that you brought up. Yeah, but it's going to be a real tough one yeah. for them. Well, thank you, Robert. Thank you for joining us for this economic update. For more information and analysis, please visit zinesbank.com forward slash economy.